this weekend. He wasn't amused when Marlon Humphreys was on Instagram Live after a game that got sneaky close. Here's Lamar. I'm all about winning, and I, I like to, I don't want to say winning style, but I just want to, when we're up, I just want to punish people. I just want to, I just want to get out of there with a the dub, you know, clear-minded, you know, just, we got things to work on. There's always going to be things to work on, no matter if you beat a team 40 to nothing, or 22 to 26, you know, or 28 to 26, but it's like, I ain't want the camera on me, like, that's my brother, you know, I know he's going to do what he do, but it's like, man, not right now, I'm, you know, I'm a little ticked off, like, how the game went, that's all. Okay. Out here talking like Brock Purdy. This is step on their throat when they're up multiple scores. Through <laughs> your reaction. I, I love it. This is just what the doctor ordered. I mean, Harbaugh, I would like to see Harbaugh talk more about it, but I know they're a self-policing locker room, mm -hmm. and he lets the players do it. I don't think Harbaugh talks enough about their fourth quarter struggles. <clears throat> all right, but to see Lamar do it, I think is great. All right, so this is what I want to see because – that win against Dallas, I had the feeling that I had when the Eagles started last year 10-1. and one. Remember, they were – I mean, they were rolling, but it was always – first it was the media talking about, how oh, they, don't, they don't look the same. They don't look that good. And then their team was even like, we don't – you know. Yeah. And so, even though they were winning, I think Lamar nipping this in the bud, right? hopefully, right away is great for them. And all that said, Lamar's been part of the problem too. So you look at these numbers, in the, the, these are the last three seasons, so it's really just two full seasons in these three games. The fourth quarter, his production, completion percentage, I mean, it doesn't drop too much, but look at the TD to turnovers. He goes from being like MVP caliber, caliber in yeah. that and passer rating even. to like, yeah, below, maybe a subpar even in the uh, fourth quarter. So he's got to play better in the fourth as well, but – this is what needs to be said because I'm glad they are not like, hey, we won, we beat a good team in their mm -hmm. building, we're back. No, this is right. Yeah, I like what he said. Look, let's be honest. It's hard to just embarrass teams every single week. And so for me, as a player, when you get in those positions, stylistically things start to change. You, your approach starts to change. When you're up 28-6, no one is thinking – Number one, about what happened last week against the Raiders and we or what has happened historically in the past and the things that we've struggled with. We believe that this game is in hand. So stylistically, your coordinators on both sides start to change how they approach things. You're going at halftime. You know what the speech is for the team that's up. Let's keep doing what we're doing. There's not a whole lot of adjustments while the other team is making all the adjustments because they are behind. And so when you go with that approach, it's it's different to just punish teams when the plays aren't really punishing anymore. It's mm -hmm. more, let's, let's calm it, let's, let's just control the ball, let's maintain possession of the ball. Like, but if they know this is a problem. I, like, what you I'm know saying, what, saying? what like, I'm saying is you don't believe it's a problem until it starts to kind of show up in your face. So until the Dallas Cowboys scored a couple times, Beyond but, but don't you think they shouldn't be feeling like in that graphic I showed last three seasons, they blown eight fourth quarter leads, which is tied for the most in the league. And four of them were double digits, which is also tied for the most. So I'm I'm just saying it should already be on there a top of mind that, hey, we've had this problem closing out games. Okay. They get, maybe do something differently. Maybe stay as aggressive hey, can I, and don't can I, can I say, get conservative. I don't this know. Cowboys thing had nothing to do with Lamar's side of the ball. I feel like everyone's forgetting how the game went. The, That's the Raven, both quarters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Ravens are up 28 to 6. Justin Tucker's lining up for a field goal. He misses it. The Cowboys get the ball. They score a touchdown. Lamar's on the sideline. The Cowboys kick an onside kick. They get it. Lamar's on the sideline. The Cowboys score a touchdown. Lamar's on the sideline. Then the Ravens get the ball. They've run at will all game. Mm -hmm. Derrick Henry run. Derrick Henry run. It's third and medium. Lamar misses one pass. Mm -hmm. They punt. The Cowboys score a touchdown. That's so Lamar had his hands on the ball for one play between 28 to 6 and 28 to 25. Then when he got the ball, he made the pass on third and six, made the run, mm -hmm. the game was over. So I'm not letting him off the hook for the last I'm, three that's years. What I'm talking about. Yes, yeah. but in this, but I what I think is noteworthy if, is who was on the field that whole time was the Ravens defense. I've watched the Ravens' defense in all three games this year. I don't know that they're good. That is, we are, I think we might be, 
missing the actual story with the Ravens right now. It's always so much about Lamar, understandably. Yeah. He's two-time league MVP. I get it. That in that Chiefs game, the best the Chiefs offense has looked all year was against them. That's true. The best the Ravens offense has looked all year was against them. The best the Cowboys offense has looked all year was temporarily against them in the fourth quarter. But the Cowboys offense really hasn't done all that much this year. It was Cleveland. It was, they, they suffocated them, and obviously against New Orleans, nothing. That, to me, is if I have a concern about Baltimore, it's wait. Did they go from the best defense in the league last year hmm. to forget top 10 or average, well below average? Because if they did, they're in real trouble. Like, and that's, and through, that's, I think that is on the board of possibilities that they did. In that fourth quarter clip. But the fact that they, they played good defensively in the first three They did, quarters, yeah. Which to me just, it's just a, uh, a psychological yeah, thing. Yeah, cycle with them. Josh Allen, uh, MVP fave, and has shown no drop-off without Stefan. In fact, some are saying addition by subtraction, but not Josh. Take a listen. I know there's a lot of people talking out there. I, again, I'm not trying to tear down anybody. Um, I've loved everybody that I've played with, you know, and you don't have to tear other people down to build each other up. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. I, with former, whether it's former players, I, yeah. And again, I, I love, I love 14. Um, I still do. Um, but I, I, everyone wants to keep making this thing a thing. And, you know, we're so focused on what's going on in our, inside of our building. And that's the only thing that we're caring about right now. Solid answer. Um, this is the idea that everybody mm. eats a uh, percentage of team oh. targets. Everybody's eating a little bit, but Diggs had over 25% of the targets in each year he was with Josh. So are you surprised Josh Allen's playing like an MVP without Stefan? I'm not at all. I mean, because we knew he's already had the whole load of the offense put on him even when Stefan was there. So you take away Diggs. And now even more of it was on him. He doesn't have a receiver that's considered elite, that's ever made a Pro Bowl. Tyler, James Cook is a, is a good running back. He's not viewed as one of the best in the league. So it is on his shoulders. So I'm not surprised at all that he's, you know, having this type of season. The reason I didn't pick him for preseason MVP is I picked Mahomes because I thought Mahomes would have a terrific season. And I didn't think the Bills' record right, would, would be good be. enough. I, I think I thought 10, 11 wins, second in the division, make the playoffs, which usually wouldn't get you the MVP. So, but no, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. What I am surprised about is with with the subtraction of Diggs, mm -hmm. you knew it would be more on Josh Allen. And so, honestly, what I was anticipating was he's going to force things a little bit more. He's going to have a little bit more turnovers. And that just it's hasn't... It's been the exact opposite. It's been the exact opposite. And that's what's been so impressive. I don't think any of us thought that this was going to be a team through three weeks that was going to be scoring 37 points a game. Right. Like, we thought that Josh Allen would be good, but overall, as a team, that's they right. just fit. It just fits. It works. And it's... It's because of Josh Allen, and Jim, they they kind of did a little bit of this last year. Mm -hmm. Right at the end of the year, yes. to, what Joe Brady decided, but you know what, would, we're not gonna, look as good. We're not going to focus on digs as much, That's and true. they started to sustain drives, and so, things started to change for them. So, I'm not. The, I think that we have to be a little careful before we just say they don't miss him. It doesn't seem like it right now. I do think, and Josh is playing brilliant, absolutely brilliant. He, without a doubt, should be the MVP through three weeks. I don't think it would even be close. I do think, and this is from some experience of a team the last couple of years, that when you have a great quarterback and a good offensive system, you don't need the star guys on the outside when you're playing the bad defenses. I agree. And so they have played Arizona, who might be a fine team, but the defense I think is going to be terrible. Right. Miami, the defense has been really bad. And Jacksonville, whose defense was borderline going into the year, top three corners hurt, top tackler hurt. They, they look like a mess. So I just wonder 
if when they get into matchups, and I don't know if the Ravens are a great defense, by the way, but against great defenses, if all of a sudden Khalil Shakir gets erased and all of a sudden Dalton Kincaid or, yeah, Dalton Kincaid, you know what I mean, yep. it isn't yep. as easy. If that's when you'll start to miss a guy who can like just win on, on his Keon. own. Like, right? It, right. And so that's – so I'm not surprised he's – I am surprised he's playing at this level. I'm not surprised he's playing really well. But I also think that you could – Find yourself in a spot where you really miss a guy who can do what Terry McLaurin did on the other end of that Jaden Daniels play. You know what I mean? In a big spot. Yeah. They just haven't had that, been in that situation yet. I'll buy that. Uh, Travis Hunter, Colorado, next. Mm.